Coming up are my full interviews with Frank Turner and Skinny Lister, who are touring together in Europe in November later this year. This was filmed at 2000 Trees Festival. I'll leave a link below to my other interviews that I've done with bands at 2000 Trees. The link will be in the description. And as well as asking them about what they've been up to this year, including touring, including EPs, new album releases, I wanted to ask them about how they got started on their instruments, what were the first things that inspired them to get into music at all, what was the first song they learned, and what advice would they have to other people who want to follow in their path. So let's start with my chat with Frank Turner just before the first of three performances that day at 2000 Trees Festival. I'm here at 2000 Trees and I'm with Frank Turner. Frank, how are you? I'm very well, I'm at 2000 Trees. How can I complain? How are you? Really well, yeah, day four. Day four, this is day one for me, I feel like a you're Imposter. fresh as a daisy. Yeah, well, well <laughs> it's still morning, so. Yeah. Um, but no, this is an exciting time for you. New album out? Yes. World record beaten? Yes. Uh, I've been, it's been a busy year. Absolutely. Sure, and it's not calming down. I just got off a US tour about five minutes ago. Um, and I was in Kingston on Thursday, and now I'm here, and I got three gigs today. Happy days. Yeah, so keeping busy, keeping myself out of trouble. What does it feel like riding this kind of wave? Um, it, it feels like a privilege and um, particularly because I've been doing this for a very long time now on my 10th album and like you know it's it, I feel very grateful and very lucky to still be doing this and indeed with the new record I'm really the wrong person to say this but it feels like there's a bit of a kind of resurgence thing going on right now um, which is very nice yeah. I'm not, no complaints I've heard you mention that you were almost connecting with your younger self at times when you were writing this album yeah. and the energy of it, a 15-year-old self. Yeah, there was, a, there was a degree of a... There was a moment in time when the record might have been a concept album. Everyone's very glad that it's not. But um, I was thinking a lot about me when I was 15. Because when I was 15, like, you know, I was in a, my first band, first tours, did a zine. It was awful. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, but it was quite a pivotal year for me in my life. And, you know, when I was 15, on the one hand, I was really angry and cocksure and all those things that 15 year olds are and then I was also it was a pretty traumatic time for me in my life on my in terms of my, my family life and that kind of thing so there's a lot to think about essentially um, and that came out in a few of the songs. Outstanding and music's important in that kind of catharsis and songwriting. Absolutely yeah I mean I mean catharsis is the word like I there's an argument to be made that my songwriting is a pub, very public form of therapy yeah. for which I apologize. Um, <laughs> But you chose to listen to it, no. Uh, but so yeah, yeah. I definitely I work a lot of my stuff out in my in my songs. Happy days. Taking it back to the very early days, do you remember what the first song you learned to play on guitar was? I do. It was uh, "Knocking on Heaven's Door," which I'm, I'm sad to say at the time I thought was a Guns N' Roses song. <laughs> Many people still think, but yeah. Yeah, I know it's terrible. But, I was surprised um, to learn it's a '70s song. I think it came out in maybe '71, '73. Yeah. I always think of it as a '60s thing. But. Yeah, no, it's it's a little bit later in the in the Dylan catalog. I, it's a great I, song. I think you're the third person to say out of about 20 bands who said that that was their first. Really? Song. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The first thing I learned was "Knocking on Heaven's Door." I think. <laughs> it's a classic. Nice. Yeah. I mean, it's an easy one as well. Which it is, but it's classic, and people, you've yeah. got to want to learn it. I mean, yeah, do you yeah, remember yeah. what the first thing was that inspired you to want to pick up a guitar or be um, a band? Yeah, I'm Maiden. Um, I'm Maiden. I, I'm wearing a Maiden jacket today. Maiden was my first love. I wasn't really interested in music, and then when I was about 10, I sort of stumbled across Maiden. And like, I mean, first of all, they're brilliant, and like, it's exciting and heavy and all that. Uh, but it's also, it was mine. I didn't know yeah. anybody else who liked Iron Maiden. Yeah. It was like I'd kind of, lifted up a rock and found a trapdoor into a secret world and like my parents hated it or my friends hated it like do you know what I mean it was like but it was so, so it was mine and that was was and indeed still is really important to me clearly but it, it was a gateway band for you into all of this the heavy yeah I mean I got into Maiden and then sort of metal more broadly and then I started reading Krang magazine and Nirvana were a thing at the time um, he said dating himself um, uh, and then you know, then there was Green Day and Offspring and punk rock and blah blah blah, and, and on we go. But broadly speaking, in the broadest possible terminology, alternative culture. Yeah, and all that, all of that still applies today. I mean, Nirvana sound is fresh today. Oh yeah, ever, definitely. Right? I mean, a lot of my favourite bands are from from the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's amazing. Um, so what about electric versus acoustic? You play plenty of solo shows. Yeah, uh, you play as many gigs in twenty four hours as there's ever been. And also done a full headline slot here with sure. the whole band and tour. 
How does it compare for you? Do you do anything different? Oh, yeah, it is different. I mean, the full band show that I do is... Uh, it's more, it's more athletic. It's slightly more focused. You know yeah. what I mean? It's got a kind of, it's a bit more of a, a show, should we say? When I'm playing on my own with a guitar, it's more conversational, and you can change the set list without asking anyone's permission. Or, or you know, do you remember that one? And or whatever, because it's just you. Um, but uh, I mean, I guess ultimately, um, it's great that I don't, I don't really have to choose per se. Do you know what I mean? I can, yeah. I can, I, I flip between the two. I played the solo show on Thursday. I'm playing two solo shows and one band show today. It's nice to switch it up. Do you remember where it first started, like that first gig and any nerves before and anything that made you do it? <laughs> my first gig was my older sister's 16th birthday party. Yes, yeah, amazing. And uh, she was not pleased. <laughs> my, she didn't like the music. I, liked. I had a band with two mates of mine. We did like ACDC and Nirvana covers and we were terrible. And um, my mum sort of arm twisted my sister into letting me play at her birthday party and her mates were all just like, this is terrible. So um, uh, I'm not sure that was the one where I got my kind of adrenaline rushing. I mean, it was fun to play. My first gig in the venue was opening for Boy Sets Fire in 1997, I believe. Um, and that was a very magic day for me. Absolutely. And 2000 and how many gigs later? Well, well, the count that I have is for solo shows, Frank Turner shows, as it gotcha. were. It doesn't include shows I've done with other touring bands I've been in. But so, I mean, It'll be well over 3,000 now since then. But um, the, my solo shows today, I'm doing 2,914 is the first one. And so, what uh, advice do you have for someone going from that first gig, maybe at their friend's birthday, <laughs> to someone who's done over 3,000 shows, for someone who's wanting um, to do it? I mean, practice makes perfect, but also like be a student. Do you know what I mean? Like every time, if I take it, actually funny enough, the Mefs are playing right now, who yeah, I'm fantastic, taking fantastic. out on tour as of tomorrow. Uh, and I produced their album and stuff, but like one of the things I sort of said to them was like every single band who I've ever seen succeed at being a touring band are taking notes yeah. right from the word go. Do you know what I mean? I remember when we talked with Jocket Murphys 12 years ago and it was just like, they're great and I love them, but it was also like, that's interesting how they just did that bit. Do you know what I mean? And you just take notes. Absolutely, never stop learning. Yeah, right. Uh, and we did have a question from James Scala, actually. <laughs> I was talking to the guys from Two Promoters, One Pod. Yes. Uh, you, which you were on a couple of I weeks was, ago. I was, yeah. And uh, at some point the conversation got on to pinched harmonics and squealies. Right. And he said, you said that you could do them. Yeah. And James let it go on the podcast, but he said, I don't think you can. Can Frank Turner I can. actually I do, do I pinched do, harmonics? I do, I do bloody loads of them when I'm playing, <laughs> not on the acoustic, but I play about half the full band set, I play electric. Absolutely. You will hear plenty of squealies out of me today. And I look forward to yeah. it. I will say this, Ben, who plays electric guitar in my band, is better at noise than me. But the thing is, we both grew up listening to Fugazi, which if you're interested in weird noise coming out of a guitar, you want to listen to Fugazi. It's all about the weird noise. And I love to say, he's better than me at the, at the noise. I mean, he's better than me at most things. But <laughs> well, the important bit is make the noise because that's yeah. the expression, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, it's just fun. You know, obviously you can play notes and chords and stuff with guitar, but it's a versatile piece of wood. You can make some strange noises. Absolutely. Frank, what's next for you for the rest of the summer? Uh, festivals. You've got UK tour starts tomorrow, which is all sold out, which is very nice. Um, and then back in the States at the end of August, um, I'm basically on tour until the heat death of the universe right now, so uh, Happy days. I'll be busy. Happy day, mate. I thank you so much for filling us in. Thank you for talking My pleasure, to us. Man. Thank you. All the best for the rest Cheers. of the summer. Thank you. I'm at 2000 Trees and I'm with Skinny Lister. Guys, how are you doing? Hello, we're good, thank you. Very good. Just arrived, headlining the forest stage tonight, which is exciting. Aye, aye. You guys have played 2000 Trees before. What do you love about this festival? You must have some good oh, memories. It's such a great community. The crowd goes mental, usually. Who knows what'll happen tonight? We've never played as late yeah. at 2000 Trees, so, you know, who knows what's going to happen? But it is, it's a great sense of community, and it's one that our, our record label, Extra Miles, quite heavily linked in with as well. So it really does feel like a community coming together every time we come here. And I think oh, this is our fourth, fourth 2000 Trees. So yeah, like meeting an old friend, you know. Absolutely. Oh, it feels the same seeing you guys too. It's like <laughs> we've seen you here a couple of times. Um, I want to ask you about your EP. Yep. Tell us about it. Well, so we, re we released our full length album, Shanty Punk, end of last year. And this new EP is a selection of songs taken from the album, but recorded live in a pub shed, uh, which is called The Forge and Flagon. And it's run by some friends of ours. It's not a pub that you can 
go. You can't go. It's not an open house, but it is a free house. <laughs> Absolutely. But it is kitted out just like a proper pub. It's got pumps, it's got brasses on the walls, everything you would want from a proper traditional English boozer. And yeah, we, we just went in there with some makeshift recording gear, a crowd of regulars, and just recorded some songs. It was great. Had fun. a great night. That's exciting. <laughs> was there a particular inspiration for that? It's a great concept. Well, the pub is, he, basically, his mum was a landlady of a pub called the Georgian Dragon that my mum was a barmaid at back in the 70s. And he got sick of pubs like closing down or having the smoking ban. So he decided to create his own little pub in the garden and he called it the Forge and Flagon, which is what we named our first album after. And so, yeah, it's been like a, a close part of our history. You know, it's always been part of our Skinny Lister journey, really. So it was really nice to get in there and actually record some songs in there rather than just go in there and cause mayhem. Absolutely, but it must have the, there must be an exciting quality to that versus the studio recording. That I must think have. So yeah, it's different. You know, it's, it's not as um, hi-fi probably, but it's uh, it's got a spirit to it. You know, definitely more drunken. Yeah, oh, it's, it's exciting. It's beer soaked recordings. <laughs> I like to think. Of it. Having played many a pub gig and many an open mic night, that's really where I started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I really connect with that. It's exciting. And I've been asking all the bands I've spoken to this weekend. Um, what was the first inspiration? that made you guys want to be in music at all? I got dragged up in folk clubs. Um, right. Playing with, de you know, making dens under stairs while my dad got drunk and singing at the top of his lungs with his mates and um, thought I'll never, ever, ever, ever do that. And right. now I'm dragging my dad around the world, <laughs> encouraging him to drink the rider and join us on stage to sing folk songs and, and have a good time and it's, oh, yeah. it just yeah obviously it got me and uh, I left behind the uh, R&B and hip-hop oh. that I used to well I still listen to a little bit of that maybe uh, but yeah but it has an infect your music has an infectious quality of like let's all do this together let's all join in it's and a that real must community be. thing yeah and it's special and it's very special when and good you times. know we can take that to a big venue or a forest in the woods you know and have everybody singing that is special, yes. It's what I live for. Do you remember, do you both play instruments? Like how do you describe yeah. your role in the band? Yeah, yes, I play guitar, Lorna sing. You do play ukulele, you used to, we I, so much things. The ukulele got me singing, yeah. Did uh, it? Not. I do a lot of ukulele lessons. Well, I, I've, I, I, I need a, them. I, I need them. No, no, <laughs> it's a huge gateway for anyone to start, because it's a self-sufficient thing. If you want to sing, ukulele is probably the quickest way to get you just singing and playing with the... It's essentially how I start. I mean, I've always sang, but not necessarily well. That's and yeah, outstanding. It just gave me like when, a when the first uh, album we did, which was called Forge and Flagger, now, yeah. you played ukulele on that, and we recorded most of those tracks live. So she, she couldn't, she puts herself I down. did oh, play it, I did yeah. play no. it. I just, I, I remember the first few gigs we did were like in the George Tavern in Shoreditch, or not Shoreditch, wherever it is, I can't remember now, in London. And um, I remember our first gig, me and Max and uh, his ex-girlfriend at the time. He's yeah. my brother as well. <laughs> He's my, <laughs> but shaking like a leaf holding the ukulele. And I realised when I could stand up and actually dance around and I felt more confident and so I bur burnt the ukulele. No, I didn't burn it, but you know, it's still treasured in a box. But you actually yeah. decided, don't need it, we can do it's this. And the collective me. as well. Yeah. yeah, I felt like I could engage the audience more. To be honest, when we started, we were a sit-down band and when anyone that knows of Skinlister now, that seems like a ridiculous concept, but it, it took a while or at least a few months before we realised uh, we needed to stand up. It was like you know those boy bands stand up <laughs> off the stool. It was it got, one of those. You didn't need it, and you didn't need it. We did it, and we never sat down again. <laughs> you didn't even need a key change no, no, to do it either. Oh, you were well, right we there. A few key changes. <laughs> <laughs> we're a little bit sophisticated, even though maybe it doesn't sound that way. But do you remember what the first thing you played on ukulele and guitar was? The first song. I, I mean, I was. Um, I was at my, I got my beat, you know, my dad's Beatles collection, all that sort of stuff. And I, I'm a massive Beatles uh, nut, Absolutely. to the point where it annoys a lot because I listen, still listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I love '50s stuff and that. And I'm probably thinking one of the first songs I ever learned on guitar was like a Buddy Holly song because it was so easy. Absolutely. Um, 
you know, Peggy Sue, any of those songs. Peggy Sue um, would be yeah. like the beginner classic. It's what about a great you? entry for anyone learning guitar. If, if you like 50s stuff, go to Buddy oh. Holly. Well, a lot of the 50s songs, but Buddy Holly, the great stuff. But yeah, anyway, love you. So. Well, um, instrument-wise, yeah. with an instrument, it's, um, it's a bit weird. It's Tennessee Stud. Tennessee Stud? Who's yeah. that by? God knows. I okay. Don't know. She's like not intentionally a... obscure. I'm so. not. It's not intentional. <laughs> no, that's far it's, too cool. The first song I ever learned, like in full, was "Shoop" by Salt and Pepper, and I yeah, regularly yeah. performed that when I was a drunk teenager. But um, <laughs> I won't do that for you now. I remember you used to do um, uh, "She Wolf." I did "She Wolf." I did "9 to 5." I did <laughs> "These Boots Are Made for Walking." I've even taught "9 to 5" on ukulele. It's just one. There are these classic songs, and it's the, it just brings people together, doesn't it? Just yeah. fun. Anything to get started. Classics. Um, so I want to ask you, what's next for Skinny Lister? What is this part of festival season for you? What's happening? We, yeah, we got a few more festivals, um, and then we've got an epic five-week tour with Frank Turner across Fantastic. everywhere in Europe. He does a lot of gigs, that boy. Oh, he does a lot of gigs, and this tour it was like um, the offer came in. Do you want to tour with Frank for five weeks? We said yes, and then they sent the routing, and we said, hmm. Wow, uh, <laughs> probably. Is that even doable? And. Uh, We'd made it doable, because how Fantastic. can we say no to Frankie Boy? Fantastic. He's inspiring the, the work ethic, the amount of gigs. Oh, he's, he's insane. He he's, wants he's to so great. tour into oblivion, is what he <laughs> told, spoke, yeah. said to me. Yeah. Beyond that, for us as well, that, that's October, November. We then have a UK tour, which runs November into December, which finishes with our big, now it's become a yearly thing, our big Christmas gig at the Scala in London on the 13th of December. Friday Outstanding. Oh, yes. Oh, it's a great venue as well. Scott. Yeah, we've done it. we did it a few years ago. We, we had a great gig there, so it's going to be good to be back there. Yeah. Outstanding. No, that's lovely. Um, thank you so much for thank talking you. with us. It's nice to, nice I to talk. Have a great gig tonight. Can't bloody wait.